<clears throat> All right. Due to one of my 11 subscribers' request, uh, they'd like to see the processes rather than just the, the finished stages or something. So we're going to do some large-scale printing. And uh, I've, I've got a set right now. We're gonna do, just going to knock a print out. And then we'll... Uh, uh, we'll set one up, a different print, to, to go through what you have to do to make the thing actually print. That's provided it works the first time. Okay, uh, I'm going to select print. And uh, normally I would have to move this, uh, the white background to center it on the thing. But uh, I've actually tried to set all the stuff on the left so I went through the, the whole thing one time anyway to, to get it to do that so it's it's in the right place so all I have to do is push print because I've set about 11 things on the left we're going to do that in a minute though the green thing is uh, it's scanning it and it sent it to the printer that's a 1.8 gigahertz, two-core uh, AMD chip in that thing. About four gigs of uh, RAM. And it's thinking about it. At this point, bank the only thing that really screws it up if it runs out of paper. And that'll bring on more talk. They're a devil of a thing to put the paper in. It goes right in, but trying to get it to track, it never wants to do what it's supposed to do. Now this is selected as color. It, it uh, I don't know, there's 32,000 color combinations. Or just black and white. If I don't want it to be black and white, I can uh, change the color on the drawing to whatever color I want it to be. And those are all scales. It's, it's uh, 256 points for the red, green, and blue. Is, what is it? Red? Red? Green and blue. Red, green, and blue. RGB. They call it RGB. And uh, notice if I made the uh, uh, the print in red, I, I could make it print all red instead of all black. You still would select color. Otherwise, it would print uh, a white piece of paper because it wouldn't find any black. What we're printing right now is a uh, uh, a stator for a big electric motor that's going to run the fan. And it's also going to uh, going to put one in a uh, on the differential of a car with the differential turned up. Make electric car out of the same thing. It's going to be overkill on the fan, but I it's uh, I want to do a lot of experimenting with the fan. And I can rewire these coils even once they're pulled in the epoxy. I can rewire them four different ways. And when we uh, when we make this stator, <clears throat> we'll have a flat piece of phenolic board. With a border around it and probably a border around the inside and then we'll set this paper in it so when we put the epoxy in it'll saturate the paper and uh you know and, and they fill up around all the coils so you'll be able to read this paper through the epoxy to see what wires to what and which is positive and negative and and uh, all the stuff you need to connect it plus it's got the bolt holes uh, marked on the outside I'm going to try picking this. I got this on a gimbal, brand new toy. And, of course, it won't. I was thinking it might let me, if I knew how to do it. Nope, wrong way. This is um, 0.6 of a millimeter wide lines. Uh, we're doing 24 inches wide. Uh... There's a red center line there, and so uh, this piece of print will, will print this twice. You'll get the left and a little bit of the right, and then the right and a little bit of the left. And you just lap the drawings over, trim some of it off, of course. And there's enough lines that cross that, that you can, you can line it up within a, uh, well, a very small margin. These uh, things here are... Uh, going to be brass bolts that connects the uh, one half of the stator to the other. Stator's two-piece because the uh, magnetic force between these two plates is a little over 90,000 pounds. 
that's like 45 US tons. You really don't want to get between that when you're putting it together. And now we're going to try to get that thing back up. This uh, print head's got uh, uh, several, uh, um, what do you call it? Oh, so. uh, so it's an inkjet printer, but rather than have a single inkjet like on, on your little ones for your, for your uh, tablets and stuff like that, there's a row of them across there, so it doesn't have to track clear across. And it also has uh, uh, multiple... Uh, uh, ink jets uh, front to back, so it covers more than than the, than one dot wide. It cuts like a, a half inch swath across. You can see how, how much the paper moves ahead each time. That's how much it prints every time it it uh, uh, makes a selection, and they can overlap. Uh, you can't see any uh, gap between them because they. I don't know how much it overlaps, but it has to be some because nothing's that perfect. And when he gets uh, to the preset length of the paper, <clears throat> there's a sliding knife runs across there, just like that. Now we're going to move this out of the way. I'm going to have a chair. And next trick. You know, looking from the side, that computer screen isn't very bright. That's unfortunate. I'll have to probably read what I'm doing. Okay. Suppose uh, I find my cursor. We go up here and we're going to select print off of the toolbar. First thing it wants to know is what printer you're going to use. Uh, this one says uh, Design Jet 110 Plus. It's actually a plus R because they got a roll feed. It's showing paper 8.5 by 11. If you click Properties, uh, you select Custom and then you put whatever size of paper you want. Um, this is selected portrait because the uh, the um, print is taller than it is wide. We select one copy. Um, vector output, that makes it actually a couple, uh, two ten thousandths of an inch long straight lines. It's not really curves. Um, but it uh, takes a lot less, uh, um, well, less data, but more speed. It doesn't have to do any computation. Um, we're going to choose print color. Now we could put display color. That would print whatever's on the screen. Uh, I can't see much. I've never used that. I either do black and white or color. Um, this is, uh, we have here, we have top, perspective, uh, front, and right. Uh, we selected top because that's the pane that uh, is up on the computer. There's, there's four sections to the screen on the drawing. Uh... We're printing whatever's in the window. If we ex did extents, it would print all four panes of the entire drawing, and uh, you wouldn't get much on the paper. Viewport would print one of those four panes, but border to border on the pane. Now, we're going to uh, move the, our uh, thing. We didn't change the paper size, so this should be fairly easy. We're going to just drag and drop. And click to see what it's going to select. And we look on the right. And uh, we've got some white space around all the stuff we're trying to print. Uh, I've got no borders on this. 
because uh, we're trying to print uh, 23 inches on a 24 inch wide piece of paper and not spray ink all over the rollers inside of the machine. Okay, now we come down here to the next line to scale. 100%. That would change if you um, change the amount of paper it uses to the amount of the actual size in the, in the computer. You draw everything in a computer one to one. You put in the stuff you know. You draw between it all the stuff you want to make it do and add and shape it and everything. And then you can measure the uh, drawing. Uh, mine's set right now for four decimal places. Uh, it'll go to 27 decimal places, but it run a, your your machine right out of memory. Even with an 11 terabyte drive in there, it would fill it up. It might take a month or two. Um, we have here uh, on the paper one inch, and in the model, that's this this drawing screen is one inch. That's a one to one. Uh, margins, it's uh, three sixteenths plus ten thousandths of an inch, top, bottom, left, and right. Going down a little farther. Um, uh, we don't. Maximum printable area, that's the printable area in your printer, which is just under 24 inches. And you don't want to do that because if you get paint in those rollers, you have to clean it off. I mean, ink. Position is centered. Uh, I'm not sure where it centers. I think it prints it with however I put it on the right over here more than, than, than centered. If I knew what to click to make it do that, it would center it. But I'm not sure. I've, I've never tried to do it. I have enough trouble with the thing. Line types. Uh... You can have dashed lines, dotted lines, uh, um, a, a sort, any kind of line that the, uh, is in your line types in your CAD system. Uh, I just use regular lines, but, but you, you can have dashed and dashed. Dash is a, a short dash, a short little line followed by a longer line. Um, <clears throat> you'll see my, those are on center lines and things. Line width. The scale is one. That means it's uh, uh, one times what your your uh, uh, line width is. Next line down, default line width, 0 0.60 millimeter. Uh, the default on it, if uh, if I didn't put a number in there, it would be a hairline, and uh, it's really hard to cut with a bandsaw if uh, if you're using hairline. I mean, the the sawdust obliterates it. Uh, point objects are half a millimeter. I mean, it'll just put a dot on the paper, half a millimeter round. Arrowhead size is two millimeters. If I had dimensions on there, I'd probably have to look at that, but we're not using dimensions today. Um, ten points, uh, uh, per whatever. I don't think it's, it can't be ten points per inch. Ten points per letter or something. That's a, the the number of dots on a piece of text is ten by ten. Okay, so we've got everything set over here. The main thing we want to do is get the right size paper, uh, which is a bear in 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 the printer setup. Takes forty five minutes usually. <laughs> after after we get it set, I set it for seventy six because I'm going to do another drawing. Uh, this drawing, uh, which only needs seventy. But I have some, such a struggle getting the paper size to do what I wanted to do. And it reads uh, something different than what I said it. And uh, I have to just live with it. It's a custom paper size. It, it's reading 8.5 by 11, but it's actually 24 by 76 on the, on the next window back, which is where you set your paper size and very little else. But we're not going to do that because... <laughs> I might have to do it on our on our setup page on the next drawing, but not this time. So we got it where we want it, and we're going to bunch print again yeah, here. And the green means it's uh, reading it. it. Had a progress bar which went by before you could see it. Hopefully, it's going to print. You might have been on the camera right there, girl. 
It wasn't intentional. This is the uh, first use of the gimbal. Uh, does a bunch of wondrous things. It's a lot smarter than the operator. I can figure things out. It can only do what it knows how to do. And I gotta tell it what to do, but it's a real smart little sucker. It's a, a bunch of uh, uh, gyroscopic stabilizers. Like you, you have one on your cell phone that uh, makes the picture right side up and, and fills the screen when you turn the phone 90 degrees. Well, there's three of them in there. They're accelerometers is what they are. But nobody ever heard of an accelerometer, so we're going to just call them gyros. He puts a gyro from the right, and uh, uh, it, turn, it moves up. They're 90 degrees out of phase. First time I put the helicopter rotors on there, I got it wrong. Of course, I didn't know how to fly a helicopter when I tried to fly it, so I didn't know it was wrong. I just flew it. And you know, after four or five minutes at, at trying to keep it from hitting the ground and, and no more than about 10 feet high... You get used to it pretty quick. Either that or you crash, you know, and then you buy another helicopter. And anyway, you can hook those rods up wrong. Next guy got in it. <laughs> you near destroyed the whole thing. Okay, what this sheet here is, uh, this is going to be a template. Let's see if we can get over there to look closer. The uh, uh, the lines with little pointy ends on them, that box gets mostly cut out. And, uh, well, let me just turn this thing here. Wrong way again. That's too much. Got some drift to it. I don't know if you can tell on here, but it's uh, uh, green, purple, and blue are the are the three colors. Or maybe it's maybe it's red. It's red and it's red and blue. North magnet, magnet, south magnet, north, south, whatever. And uh, you lay this on the uh, the 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 metal wheel that you that you're mounting your magnets to, and uh, because these magnets are really hard to move, but you put them in there, and that spaces them. Get some turn the right way, the right distance from the hub. Uh, all you have to do is put a north and a south, and you're you're ready to go. The red uh, band going around there, a separate piece, kind of plain looking. That's the uh, the the metal ring that the uh, stator sits on. It bolts to that. Uh, there's actually this uh, piece is a half inch threaded rod with uh, jam nuts. And that lets you uh, clearance the, uh, the stator between the two uh, magnet plates. Closer, it's, it's exponential. The closer you get it, the more powerful the motor, or the less uh, electric current it takes to make the same amount of power. Most time when I'm printing, I'll, uh, especially if it's a print that's 10 or 11 feet long, uh, I'll start it printing and uh, just go in and watch television. And when I come out to get a drink or go to the bathroom or something, I'll start the next print. I don't care how long it takes because I'm not going to sit here and watch it. The only thing, uh, place it really could ever screw up is when the paper runs out. <laughs> and then it, uh, when it, when the last paper comes through the roller there, it quits spraying ink. And uh, you have to redo it. Let's see. Ought to be some way to. Well, I know why I didn't have it uh, pointed at the screen straight on. Where the oh, wait a minute! I can do something about this. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, we're going to get this over here turned around towards it. And of course you can't read the screen, but 
That's because it's not square to the screen. So we'll turn the computer. Who says you can't learn at my age? And we'll turn this a little bit more. And then we have to do the tilt thing. Uh, what is the button? Tilt down to go down. Okay. Let me uh, toss this drawing out of the way so I don't mash it. Okay, uh, that's uh, all I want to print on this drawing. We'll click, uh, uh, I don't know if we had any. I didn't make any changes. Um, solar water heater. open. It was supposed to open when you double click it. I don't know what this plug-in is. It's asking for it. I think that's a computer error. It's going to want me to confirm that. We're going to tell it again. Okay. Now we're going to load another drawing. Most of the time, uh, if I'm going to draw a uh, or print like uh, uh, 20 some different pages I'll drag uh, all those onto one drawing and then all I have to do is move that window around like uh, uh, when the guys want uh, patterns for our iron security grills uh, like if, if, I, if I got 40 uh, hand reels all different you know all different drawings but they're the same uh, width and height so all I have to do is set up a uh, a, a drawing paper size and they just just do the move thing and push print so it goes pretty quick a lot of time watching television doing that way not much time sitting here staring at this okay now what is it I think it's just what it looks like. Let me push print here. First thing we got to do is... Heh. Obviously that's not right. paper size paper size is all screwed up um wait a minute let's cancel that for a second most time I write down in here needs a piece of 48 inch paper so we're going to go back to this. Uh, properties, custom size. You're supposed to be able to type in this thing and have it uh, change the numbers. And I don't know why it didn't work today, but it didn't work on the last piece of paper either. Okay. 
Um, this is going to be uh, something bigger than 48. I had to do this on the last one too. That's why I did this before I uh, turned the camera on. Had the same thing. It wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't delete a an entry, and it wouldn't let me type over it. It wouldn't change it on the first page. Mm -hmm. Now we're to thirty. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, forty-eight. Uh, we're gonna write over whatever custom four was by clicking OK, and hopefully it, it'll actually print that. And then we're gonna save the change. Otherwise, this number will go back to eight and a half by eleven. Enter a valid name for the configuration. Valid name. Type paper. Source automatically select. Oh, it's not going to let me. Uh, it's not going to let me write a name. We're going to just let it call it 24 by 63. Maybe. <laughs> I guess we're going to try OK. And it still reads 8.5 by 11, but you notice my piece of paper has got to be a bunch bigger. Now we got to find it right over top of the thing we're trying to print. Okay. Uh, I really don't have to move this because what I need is actually on the paper. But... I'm just going to make it a little more even on the margins. Okay, it's on the page. We we'll hit print. It reads it. The status bar goes so fast you can't see it. <clears throat> We're going to start printing anyway. Uh-oh. As luck would have it, the paper ran out. We'll travel down the Valley by on boxes. Well, let's see here. This is the three-axis gimbal head. You notice as I turn this thing this way and that. And tilt it up and down. Turn the handle, keeps the camera steady.
Anyway, I'm going to back and change paper and print some stuff. Uh, apparently I've got, this thing has got the camera light on too. But that's going to use a bunch of battery. That's what the roll looks like. It's a paper tube inside the paper. Up there, those are uh, the boxes of paper. People complain about unsteady camera work. They haven't tried to aim one of these things. Yeah, okay. The box is about 25 and a half inches long and it's about eight by eight, but the roll of paper's only six. This one's 150 feet. It's uh, bond, this white bond paper. Same thing as your uh, home printer. Okay, we're gonna turn all this mess off. Um, camera 